Greetings, my beautiful lovelies. It's Emmy. How are you? It's great to see you and welcome back. Today we are going to be making what might be the best baked potato, or as they say in the UK, jacket potato. Now, I always thought jacket potatoes were synonymous with baked potatoes, but I've recently learned that might not be the case. Jacket potatoes are whole potatoes that are cooked with their skin on in the oven, but from my understanding, they are a little bit crisper on the outside. Now, oftentimes when we make baked potatoes in the States, we wrap them in foil, put them in a hot oven, leave them in there for about an hour, unwrap them, cut a slice into them, fluff them up, add some butter, sour cream, cheese, bacon, broccoli, whatever you wanna put on your baked potato, and that's a baked potato. And I always thought that was the same thing as a jacket potato. The jacket was simply the skin of the potato. But I've heard otherwise that jacket potatoes actually are crisper on the outside. They are cut with an X before baking so that some of the steam can be released. My British friends, let me know in the comments your definition of what a jacket potato is. At any rate, we are going to be making a cheesy, garlicky version of a jacket potato inspired by Poppy Cooks. I'll put a link down below to the inspiration. And I am using a little inspiration from my six-sided Korean bakery bun that I made a couple of years ago. If you haven't seen that video, please check it out. I'll put the link also down below. It's a beautiful round bun that has been cut into six wedges, and then it is stuffed with a sweet cream cheese and topped with a luscious, garlicky, buttery, parsley sauce on top, and then baked again, and it's absolutely decadent and delicious. It's a wonderful take on garlic cheesy bread. So I'm gonna use that as inspiration for today's baked or jacket potato. So let's go ahead and get started. Now the first thing we're going to need are some potatoes. So I'm going to be using three Yukon Gold potatoes, relatively large. These tend to be a little bit waxier than a russet potato, which is what I normally would use for a big potato, but Papa uses a variety that looks yellow like this, so I'm going to try it. I love potatoes of all varieties, but russets are particularly good for baked potatoes because they're nice and fluffy. These tend to be a little bit waxier. These are kind of good multi-purpose potatoes that make great potato salad. Also mashed potatoes, and I think they bake up nicely as well. They're just a little bit waxier, just a little bit firmer than a fluffy russet potato, but I think these can be just fine. And because of their round shape, I think they will make a nice six-sided presentation. So behind me, I've got my oven preheated to 400 degrees Fahrenheit, 200 degrees Celsius, and we're gonna pop these in that very hot oven, but we want it to be preheated first. Next, I'm gonna prickle these a little bit, just a bit. And then I'm gonna take some neutral vegetable oil. This is sunflower oil and drizzle that all over our potatoes along with a good amount of salt. And this happens to be kosher salt. Now I'm gonna go ahead and get my hands messy. I'm gonna leave the salt open and we're gonna really rub that oil all into the skin. Give it a good sun tan oil coating. Lovely, and that will help to crisp things up. Now, since we've rubbed this, we might wanna add a little bit more salt to things. My dear friend Preston taught me how to bake potatoes on a bed of salt and didn't use any foil whatsoever, and it was a revelation to me. It made such a beautiful potato. Ah, Preston, I miss you. So now we're gonna pop these into our hot oven and bake them for 45 minutes, an hour. It really depends on the size of your potato. You want them to be fork tender. That means when you stick a fork in it, it goes in very easily. There's no hardness or resistance in the middle. Alrighty. All right, my lovelies, my potatoes have been in the oven for about an hour and they are cooked. When I inserted a skewer, they went in nice and cleanly. So let me grab them. Here are the potatoes and they've taken on a nice kind of golden color. And I want to reiterate that you wanna place the potatoes directly onto the rack. You don't wanna put them on a pan because that will help to crisp them up. So this is what I mean a skewer or a toothpick or a fork should go in all the way without any effort. You shouldn't meet any resistance. Then you know your potato is done. So in this bowl, I have one stick of melted butter and I'm going to add three small cloves of garlic or about one 
teaspoon of minced garlic. This is fresh right into the butter. Swizzle that around. I want it to have a really strong garlicky flavor, so I'm not cooking the garlic at all, just adding it to the melted butter. To that, I'm gonna add some fresh chopped parsley. Boop, boop, boop. And I'm gonna save a little bit more for garnish. And that's my quick garlic butter. This is salted butter, by the way. If you haven't salted, just add salt. So here I've got laughing cow cheese. I have not had this cheese in a long time. I think when I was a kid, sometimes I would get it in my lunchbox, but I always loved this presentation. Look at that, isn't that great? <laughs> All these beautiful wedges of cheese. You could use any cheese that you like, shred your own favorite cheese. When I did the six-sided bread rolls, I used cream cheese, which was phenomenal, but I decided to use this cheese because it's been a long time since I've had it. So I'm gonna give this a nibble. I haven't had this in a long time. Hmm. Softer than American cheese. Very, very soft. Very strong, funky flavor. So if you don't like strong, funky cheese flavors, then you might not like this aged white cheddar variety. But I do, I like it. Now I left my oven on because we're gonna place this back in the oven to cook a little bit longer. So with each potato, I'm going to cut it into six wedges. So down, but don't cut all the way through. So cut three slices, two and three. I'm gonna gently widen it up a little bit. Oh my gosh, so hot and cute. Look how cute that is, okay. All right, so that's the potato. Do the same thing with this one. One, two, ooh, three, very hot. And spread it out a little bit. This one I think I spread out a little bit too much and it's falling open, which I don't quite like. I want it to still have that kind of round shape. So press it down a bit, kind of sink it down. I think that's the trick. I've never made this recipe before, by the way, as all of my recipes. I want you to experience the first time making them as well as I do. Oh my gosh, she's so hot. Now we're gonna take our cheese. We're gonna put this right in the middle. Break it up so that each wedge has a piece. What I intended to do before I put the cheese in there was to paint some of this garlic butter inside. So I'll do that now. But I really wanted some of this to be on the potato before I put the cheese so we'll do that to this one. So using a pastry brush, generously slather butter into here. Oh, this is gonna be smacking good. And you can put some on the outside too because we wanna eat the skin too. Remember we scrubbed our potatoes before we baked them. This makes it so easy to season the potato because it's cut open so you can get right into each nook and cranny with the butter. <laughs> right, so we've got cheese in each one of these potatoes. And for the final little bit, I'm gonna add a drizzle of honey. Now this might seem like a little bit of a stretch, but after having that six-sided bread with the cheesiness and the sugar, it was absolutely delicious. So I'm gonna add a little bit drizzle of honey on top. Back into the oven for about 10 minutes or until everything gets nice and melty and gooey. <laughs> do, 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 do. <sighs> These smell so great. These smell so good. Look at these, so good. Now, I'm gonna take this excess butter that I have in this, in the foil. Drizzle this extra butter right on top of each one of these. So we don't want that to go to waste. Boop, 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 boop. Give it a little extra sheen and flavor. Yum! And then I'm gonna add a little pepper, because I love pepper, and a little extra parsley. Look how great these look. Cute. Okay. Now just a little extra parsley. Oh yeah. These ones too. So cute. Stinky. 
steamy they are. Boom. Lovelies, look how stinking cute this looks. Looks so good. Love it, love it, love it. Alrighty. Let's tuck into this, get a bite with everything. Cheese, garlic, and honey, and a little bit of parsley. Alrighty, here we go. Itadakimasu. Mmm. Oh man, that's good. Potatoes are so good on their own. They're so soft and buttery and starchy. I have to just say, I am a big fan of potatoes. I just love plain boiled potatoes, a little bit of salt. So stinking delicious. But with butter, potatoes and butter are just like best friends. Mmm, so good. The garlic has a very strong, pungent flavor which pairs beautifully with the butter. But the combination of salty cheese, sweet honey, butter, and soft, fluffy, tender potato is just sublime. Even though I use salted butter, this does need a little hit of salt. I'm gonna just sprinkle that on top just to give the potato a little extra seasoning. I almost forgot, I did put salt on the outside. So let's taste the jacket part of the jacket potato. Yum, here we go. Mmm, mm hmm That's lovely. I am a huge fan of potato skins. It has a really great flavor. And there's a little bit of crispness, great texture, but I really like the taste of it. And it's a little bit salty because we rubbed some salt on the outside and that oil helped crisp it up a bit. But my favorite way to eat a baked potato is to fork the inside like this and mix all the ingredients together. So let's try it that way. Oh my gosh, so buttery. Then you end up with something like mashed potatoes, right? Mmm. So the Laughing Cow cheese that I use blends really well with the mashed potato and the melted butter. If you want a more cheese pull, stretchy cheese experience, then I would use something like mozzarella instead. Both would be delicious. Mmm. So good. I think the main takeaway here is cutting the potato into wedges, stuffing it, and then baking it for a little bit longer. I can imagine so many different permutations that would be so stinking delicious. Sour cream, chives, chili, bacon bits, cheese and bacon bits, cooked broccoli and melty cheese. So by cutting it into wedges, I think you can really get into the potato and season it really well with whatever you are seasoning. And by cooking it directly on the rack without any foil, it gives you a drier skin and a crisper crust. Absolutely stinking delicious. Mm-hmm. Mm. -hmm. mm. And on one of the potatoes that you make, try the honey or a sprinkle of sugar. Just try it. I think you'll like it. <laughs> All right, my lovelies, there you have it. Simple, easy to make, absolutely scrum diddly umptious, garlicky, cheesy jacket potatoes. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed that one. I hope you learned something. Please share this video with your friends. Follow me on social media, like this video, subscribe, and I shall see you in the next one. Toodaloo, take care, bye. I'm gonna have dinner soon. I'm gonna spoil my dinner with jacket potatoes. Mmm. Mmm.